sound is such a large part, well, of any film, really, but for this film, we had a lot of heavy lifts that we were asking of both score, supporting the song, the iconic song, Happy Christmas War is Over, and also, from a sound perspective, how do we support this idea that this film is about war, not a war, not a specific war. And this is something that we worked very hard on throughout the entire course of the film to make you feel, it's, it's loosely in the world of World War I, but we d went to great lengths to make it not be specific to a specific conflict because we wanted to make a statement about all war. So from a sound perspective, what Jack Whitaker and Duncan McRae did, I had a big ask of them. Getting to work with Dave on War Is Over was just a very special experience. We first met at a spotting session and to, to go over some ideas and discuss the concepts of the project. I had a big ask of them I, on, on a number of different fronts. One of, the, one of the asks was, can we create an audio language for the film that we have all these weapons? So you hear gunshots, you hear, actually hear helicopters in there, there's a tanks. I said, what I need you to do is take sounds from every war from the last hundred years and put it in this film because we don't want anybody to be able to put their finger on what conflict this is. War is over is about all wars. It's the eternal war, it's every war, it's not a specific war. And we wanted to express that, that violence and futility of war and contrast it against this beautiful intimate game of chess between two soldiers from the opposing armies. Using sound effects and sounds and sound design of all wars, not just a modern war a, or a or the First World War. We use sounds from every war, black powder for the explosions, rifles from the First World War, tanks from the Second World War, Apache helicopters from the Gulf War. The Falcon Islands, so from Korea, World War II, World War One. we had trench guns from, I think, World War One. we had 50 cows from, you know, World War II. We really wanted to blend it and make a thing that would take the viewer to a place that it could be anywhere at any given time. Without dialogue to draw the focus for the audience on a film like War Is Over, I'm working really closely with Jack Whitaker to find the right sounds at the right moment and delivering a, a great performance from Icarus really gives the emotion that we would from a actor's performance. Capturing the emotive character of Icarus was a challenge. Dave really, really wanted to bring this bird to life and make her the central character of the piece. And we did that by manufacturing and designing a palette of bird vocals that would emote what we were seeing on screen. So keeping the audience engaged when, when we were focused on the right sounds at the right moment played a really big role. And having that translate between all the different uh, listening and viewing environments, we have a, a bold theatrical mix where we have the range to be quiet and then bold at times. And translating that to a home audience, we really have to pick the right moments and the right sounds to get the same message through. Even when you go into the tent and you see Winston and Icarus sitting there and they're playing the game, you hear this rumbling in the background that's always hinting at the war is always going, like they, they've had a brief respite from it and been able to step away for, from it for a second, but they are still in it. It becomes challenging because you have nowhere to hide. With every sound that you put in, you know it's gonna be a focus point. And the music does a great job of building the emotion and the arc of the story. And every other moment that we add sound to only enhances what Dave and Brad are looking to tell at that time. We actually made the sounds stay discreetly on the left and the right side, depending on which army you were with. So when we were on the guy on the left, all sounds were playing on the left side and all of the camp was playing on the right side. 
It's a very subtle thing, but something I think helps with the emotion of the piece um, and sort of grounds the viewer into the environment. And Jack also, and, and, and Duncan both, knew that the score was the voice of our characters. Harmonizing with the incredibly important score and obviously the song, which was, which is the anchor of the piece and the message of the movie, and playing against those pieces, and then blending of the bird wings f to come out of gunfire was a concept that Dave was very, very specific about. Uh, it was something that we really spent a lot of time on. The song is the message of the film. So when our song starts to play, it takes full stage. This was an obvious decision. As the story evolved to a point where the war is over, we didn't need the cacophony of battle and the trauma that all of these soldiers were going through. We needed to focus on what really was being told with this piece. And they really respected Thomas Newman's score in that sometimes the score had to be the voice, sometimes the sound effects had to be the voice, and those three aspects, the score, the song, the sound, all blend together in a really perfect way, and I was, we were very lucky to have those artists on this film.